Geese talked about wallets, but not necessarily the, you know, sort of disaggregated right. uh, among. Terrorists might have received is significantly smaller. Uh, thank you for that question. The gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Emmer, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I want to thank Chairman McHenry for holding this important hearing today, and I want to thank you, uh, all of our witnesses, or our, our witnesses, for uh, your testimony. On October 10th, 2023, the Wall Street Journal reported that between August 2021 and June 2023, Hamas received 41 million in digital assets and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad received 93 million in digital assets. Under Secretary Nelson, is this Treasury's assessment too because the world's leading blockchain analytics firms have called this a misinterpretation of the data and that the amount these, uh, that any terrorist might have received is significantly smaller. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Congressman. And, and uh, yes, I think uh, that assessment largely tracks with our own. Um, the, the numbers noted in the Wall Street Journal piece talked about wallets, but not necessarily the, you know, sort of disaggregated right. uh, among the wallets customers. It's, it's assets that people had in their wallets as opposed to what was specifically going to uh, the uh, I, Palestinian Islamic Jihad That's what we in think Hamas. Is most likely, uh, and we also assess that terrorists still pref prefer, frankly, to use traditional products and services. But this is something that we are obviously monitoring very closely. And I, I appreciate that. How much do you think uh, actually got into the hands of Hamas or uh, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad? Uh, I think we we can have a classified conversation about. Um, precise numbers or expectations. I think we have um, done, and both Hamas and the, the PIDGE, uh, a good job at identifying the virtual asset service providers that they've relied on and the financial facilitators that uh, they have historically relied on that would tend to use virtual assets. So we don't expect the number is very high, particularly- I'd love to take you up on that because yeah. I sent a letter with several other uh, members right after this uh, erroneous Wall Street Journal report asking for uh, specific information, so I, we'll take you up on that offer. Uh, Under Secretary Nelson, um, you said that digital assets are not the preferred means of terrorist financing, but I want to be clear, uh, digital assets were not even a popular tool for Hamas or the pa uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, correct? Uh, I think that's correct, and, and one of the reasons that is is because our uh, work with uh, our counterparts in Israel well, I'll, I'll, prior I'll to you, October 7th. I'll give you credit for that, but I'm going to reclaim my time because I, <laughs> I, I, I really want to make uh, just a record here I, because regardless, to be clear, Hamas is using crypto in relatively small amounts compared to what's been widely reported. That's correct. That's our it? assessment, yep. Uh, does Treasury have a responsibility to correct the record here? Uh, and perhaps this is involving some of the classified uh, information you're talking about. Because I understand that, like today, uh, with FinCEN, Treasury has acknowledged that digital assets are not the preferred financial product for terrorists, but Treasury has the data to paint the correct narrative of crypto and how it's used, and instead we have senators who are legislating on these false figures and major CEOs using these figures to inform their perspectives on digital assets. Sure, we can go to chain analysis and use their third party reporting, but Treasury already has the data. So doesn't Treasury have a responsibility to correct the record here? And we've put out a number of reports on uh, illicit finance risk in the context of virtual assets. And I think we have clearly stated while there is not a, a significant uptake that we perceive currently that it is an area of opportunity that we know uh, terrorist groups could use. And we have seen some, not Hamas necessarily, but other terrorist organizations, particularly uh, focused on the ability to use crypto to move their I, finance. I appreciate uh, that, but I'm talking about the misinformation that the Wall Street Journal has suggested and that certain senators are doing, uh, uh, trying to base legislation on that would literally destroy innovation in this country. Uh, and I take it that uh, you don't have a position then as to whether Treasury uh, has an obligation to correct this record with the data that they have. Uh, it, it, uh, it seems to me that they would. I want to thank you uh, I, and your colleague for being here again today. Uh, and in my opinion, the Treasury uh, must do a better job with all the data it has 
to paint an accurate narrative of digital assets and not perpetuate a false one. And with that, Madam Chair, I yield back. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from New York. He's talked about wallets, but not necessarily the, you know, sort of disaggregated right. uh, among. Islamic That's Jihad what we and think Hamas. is most likely. Uh, and we also assess that terrorists still prefer the wallets customers. It's, it's assets that people had in their wallets as opposed to what was. In, uh, Congressman, and, and uh, yes, I think uh, that assessment large. Assets and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad received $93 million in June 2023, Hamas received 41 million and digital terrorists might have received is significantly smaller. Uh, thank you for that question. Thank Chairman McHenry for holding this important hearing today and I wanna thank you